Why does your Toyota Camry owner's manual say 0W20 only, but the exact same engine in Europe allows 5W30 or even 10W30? Same car, same engine, same manufacturer, but completely different oil recommendations depending on which country you bought it in. This isn't a mystery, and it's not about climate differences. It's about government regulations, corporate fuel economy pressure, and engineering compromises that directly affect your engine's long-term durability. By the end of this video, you'll understand exactly why this oil discrepancy exists and whether using the thinner 0W20 in your engine is actually the best choice for protection and longevity. Let's break this down. The answer starts with CAFE standards. Corporate average fuel economy regulations require every automaker selling vehicles in the United States to meet strict fleet-wide fuel economy targets. These standards escalated dramatically from 27.5 miles per gallon in 2010 to requirements approaching 40 miles per gallon. If manufacturers don't hit these targets, they face massive federal fines. We're talking millions of dollars for every tenth of a mile per gallon their fleet falls short. So how do automakers extract that last bit of efficiency to avoid penalties? One of the easiest ways is reducing internal engine friction by specifying thinner oils. Synthetic lubricants reduce energy loss to friction, while lower viscosity lubricants reduce pumping losses. When a manufacturer submits a vehicle for EPA fuel economy certification, the oil viscosity used during testing becomes part of the official specification. Research from the late 1990s showed that 5W20 is approximately 1.5% more fuel efficient compared to 5W30. That might not sound significant, but on a 30 mile per gallon vehicle, that translates to nearly half a mile per gallon improvement, which is huge when you're trying to meet federal mandates. Here's the critical part. Once an engine is EPA certified with 0W20, changing that specification later requires the entire vehicle to be recertified. That's an expensive months long process involving new emissions testing and fuel economy verification. So manufacturers essentially lock themselves into that thinner oil specification for the life of that engine platform, even if engineers know a thicker oil would provide better protection in certain conditions. The same Toyota Camry 2.5 liter engine that requires 0W20 in the United States officially allows 5W30 and 10W30 in Europe, Australia, and Japan. Why? Because those markets don't have the same stringent cafe requirements. European fuel economy standards focus more on CO2 emissions than pure miles per gallon, and they allow manufacturers more flexibility in oil viscosity choices based on ambient temperature ranges. Let's talk about what these viscosity numbers actually mean. The 0W in 0W20 refers to cold temperature flow. It means the oil flows like a zero weight oil at startup in winter conditions. The 20 represents viscosity at full operating temperature, how thick the oil remains when your engine is hot. Compare that to 5W30. It's only slightly thicker during cold starts, but at operating temperature, it's 50% more viscous than 0W20. That thicker film provides stronger protection under heat and pressure, exactly what you want during highway driving, towing, or high-speed operation. The key difference is priority. 0W20 prioritizes cold start protection and fuel economy. 5W30 prioritizes high temperature protection and durability. When the same engine uses different oils in different countries, it's because regulatory priorities have shifted, not because the engine itself is different. Now here's something most people don't realize. Modern engines are built with extremely tight manufacturing tolerances. The bearings, pistons, and valve train components are designed to operate with thinner oils. This allows faster warm-up, reduced internal friction, and better emissions performance. However, as engines age and accumulate miles, those tight tolerances increase. Bearing clearances widen microscopically, piston ring tension decreases, and valve guide wear increases. This is why many experienced mechanics recommend moving up one viscosity grade after 75,000 to 100,000 miles especially in vehicles originally designed for 0W20. Here's where things get interesting for American drivers. Most of the United States experiences significantly hotter summer temperatures than Japan or Germany. In states like Arizona, Texas, Florida, and Nevada, oil temperatures regularly exceed 240 degrees Fahrenheit in stop and go traffic. At these extreme temperatures, thin oils like 0W20 can lose viscosity more rapidly than thicker grades. This doesn't mean 0W20 is inadequate, but it does mean the oil is working harder to maintain proper protection under sustained heat. This is exactly why Toyota, Honda, and Mazda quietly recommend 5W30 for the same engines in markets like Australia, 
the Middle East, and Southeast Asia where heat is the primary concern and fuel economy regulations are less stringent. In those regions, engine longevity takes priority over squeezing out every last tenth of a mile per gallon. Now let's address the warranty question because this worries people. If you switch from specified 0W20 to 5W30, will it void your warranty? Under the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act, manufacturers cannot deny warranty coverage unless they prove your modification caused the failure. If you use high-quality synthetic 5W30 that meets current APISP or ILSAC standards, and your engine fails for unrelated reasons, your warranty protection remains intact. Many owner's manuals actually include fine print stating that 5W30 may be used if 0W20 is unavailable, provided it meets the same performance specifications. Many mechanics privately recommend switching to 5W30 after 60,000 to 80,000 miles, especially in hot climates or for engines that tow regularly. It's not breaking rules, it's adapting to real-world conditions instead of EPA laboratory test conditions. The same engine that uses 0W20 in America was engineered and validated to run safely on 5W30 elsewhere. You're simply choosing the specification that better matches your actual operating environment. Here's something even most mechanics don't fully understand. The additive package in your oil matters more than the viscosity number itself. Two different 5W30 oils can perform completely differently depending on their detergent strength for preventing sludge, zinc and phosphorus content for wear protection, and base oil type whether it's PAO, ester, or group 3 hydrocrack synthetic. A premium 0W20 full synthetic with strong additives can actually outperform a cheap 5W30 conventional oil in every category because of superior film strength and anti-wear chemistry. This is why oil quality matters as much as viscosity. Don't just grab the cheapest oil that matches the number on your cap. Look for oils that meet or exceed current API and ILSAC specifications. For most modern engines, that means API SP and ILSAC GF6A or GF6B ratings. These newer specifications ensure the oil is formulated for modern engine technology, including direct injection, turbocharging, and extended drain intervals. Let me give you real-world guidance based on actual conditions. If you drive mostly short trips under 10 miles, live in consistently cold climates, and follow regular oil change intervals every 5,000 to 7,500 miles, 0W20 works perfectly fine. The engine was designed for it, and you're operating within the parameters EPA testing was based on. But if you regularly drive long highway distances, live in hot climates where summer temperatures exceed 90 degrees, tow trailers or haul heavy loads, or have over 75,000 miles on your engine, then 5W30 full synthetic will likely provide better long-term protection with minimal impact on fuel economy. The difference in fuel economy between 0W20 and 5W30 is typically less than 0.5 miles per gallon in real-world driving. On a vehicle averaging 30 miles per gallon, you might see 29.7 instead of 30.0. That's about 15 additional gallons of fuel per year if you drive 15,000 miles annually. At current fuel prices, that's roughly $50 to $60. But the potential savings in reduced engine wear, lower oil consumption, and extended engine life can easily exceed that minor fuel cost. Here's what professional mechanics actually do with their personal vehicles. When mechanics service their own cars, many don't actually use 0W20 even when specified. Independent technicians and dealership veterans commonly run 5W30 or even 5W40 in their personal engines, especially in hot climate states. They use 0W20 in customer vehicles because that's the specification on the service invoice, but for their own engines where they prioritize longevity over fuel economy, thicker oil is the preferred choice. One master technician told an automotive forum, we use 0W20 for customers because it's what the manual says, but if it were my engine, 5W30 every time. It holds up better under real world stress. Another dealership tech added, the fuel economy difference is so minimal that most drivers never notice it, but the long-term where benefits of slightly thicker oil are significant. Now let's be clear about when you should absolutely stick with 0W20. If your engine is brand new or under 50,000 miles, if you live in consistently cold climates, if your driving is primarily short trips under ideal conditions, and if you're following manufacturer recommended oil change intervals precisely, then 0W20 is appropriate. Modern 0W20 synthetic oils are extremely well engineered and provide excellent protection when used as intended but recognize that intended use assumes ideal conditions. EPA test cycles don't account for sitting in traffic at 110 degree ambient temperature, towing a trailer up mountain grades, or accumulating 150,000 miles of wear. The same engineers who specified 0W20 
20 for American EPA certification also validated 5W, 30 for the same engine in markets where durability takes priority over maximum fuel economy. Your goal isn't to use the thinnest possible oil. Your goal is to use oil that fits your actual driving conditions and engine condition. The same engine design that uses 0W, 20 in America was engineered to run safely and reliably on 5W30 abroad. You're not violating engineering principles by using the thicker specification, you're simply choosing the option better suited to your operating environment. If this information changed how you think about oil viscosity and cafe regulations, hit that like button. Drop a comment telling me your vehicle make, model, year, what oil you're currently using, and your typical driving conditions. I'll respond with specific guidance for your situation. And if you want more honest talk about automotive maintenance that cuts through marketing nonsense and gives you facts, subscribe to this channel. Next week, I'm breaking down the truth about extended oil change intervals. Manufacturers claim 10,000 miles is safe, but is it really protecting your engine or just reducing their warranty costs? You need to hear this before your next oil change. Hit subscribe so you don't miss it. Remember, the best oil for your engine is the one that matches your real-world driving, not just what passed an EPA laboratory test.